let's kind of take a look back, a walk down memory lane, if you will, uh, to the extent that we are as we're kind of wrapping up the first half of this year and apply some of those findings to what could happen or what is anticipated in the second half. What are some of the top considerations for you as you're looking out into the future? Absolutely. I, and I, I think you're going to get a little bit of a unique perspective from me, um, given that I am a quantitative portfolio manager um, who specializes in more thematic styles of investing. Um, so one thing that I think applies both, you know, what we've learned over the past six months and how we're, we're thinking of the, the next six months ahead is we're really starting to, to focus on uh, less traditional style factors in terms of um, managing risk and, and neutralizing our portfolios. Um, you know, we've seen a lot of the impact of AI. Um, we're starting to talk a lot about the impacts of elections, uh, interest rates, and global unrest. It's um, how can we measure these um, less standardized factors and how can we neutralize our portfolio so that we don't get swung around as these kind of alternative factors impact the markets? Well, the, of the top themes that have really played out, uh, especially over the first half here of 2024. I mean, uh, largely, even as we think about one specific name, it's been it's been NVIDIA and how high can the one singular name that has been the poster child at this juncture for the picks and shovels of generative AI carry the rest of the market? How long does that theme hold strong from your purview? You know, I, I obviously that drove a, a lot of the year to date, and um, I don't believe AI is going anywhere. I mean, as, as a quant, I see it going to help my work positively. And, um, you know, I have three children and you teaching them how to use AI. So I, I do think we're just at the beginning of that theme. Um, but so it is just one of the one of the many themes that um, and, you know, macro factors that are going to be driving the markets. I think there might be a bigger diversity and factors driving the market going ahead. One of the factors is also the Fed sensitivity that this market has right now here. How are you evaluating the rate cut anticipations that the markets are, are trying to wrap our heads around and not fighting the Fed, but at least anticipating what may be coming? You know, in most of my portfolios, um, in our uh, portfolio that focuses on a more of a gender lens, a gender factor, you know, our goal is to neutralize our exposure to interest rates. Um, one, my other thematic portfolio is infrastructure, which has been particularly rate sensitive. Um, so we are, uh, there's not much you can do from an infrastructure and asset per, um perspective to avoid being rate sensitive. So we are kind of awaiting the, the peak rates there um, and, and expecting it to positively impact the portfolio. Um, we've seen June has been pretty positive um, from that perspective. Um, I think our sustainable tilt impacts is known for um, our sustainability tilt um, on all that we do. And that has helped us um, versus uh, traditional infrastructure, but it has still been a headwind. Um, that we are awaiting um, awaiting a change on. Certainly. And so as you do think about the second half of this year, what, what are some of the top areas that investors would be apt to keep on their watch list? Again, I, I think, you know, neutralizing the risk, I, I think we're going to see bigger baskets of stocks that are uh, taking a bet on the outcome of the election and just kind of identifying those and, you know, knowing where you stand, where your portfolios stand from that perspective. And, and there are certain quant tools that we use, um, they call it either blind factor analysis, principal component analysis to identify those stocks um, that, you know, maybe swing in one direction or another as, as sentiment swings towards the election. Um, so I think that will be um, a particularly sensitive area going forward.